Hello dear viewer and welcome to this channel. This video is all about FODMAPs, what they are and why many people with intestinal problems cannot tolerate them. Stay tuned if you suffer from intestinal problems such as recurrent diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain or constipation. These symptoms are often referred to as irritable bowel syndrome and extremely many people suffer from them. Since you landed on the video, probably you too. It is estimated that 50% of visits to the gastroenterologists are due to what is called IBS. So let's dive in together. What are FODMAPs? FODMAPs are substances that are naturally present in many foods. The word FODMAP stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides and polyols. Saccharide here stands for sugar, which is the basic compound in these substances. FODMAPs are certain short-chain sugars and sugar alcohols. Basically, these substances are not harmful. However, many people do not tolerate large amounts of FODMAPs. Why is that? FODMAPs are fermentable carbohydrates. If FODMAPs are poorly absorbed in the small intestine, they pass into the large intestine. When FODMAPs are digested, fermentation processes occur here. Gases are produced, resulting in flatulence and diarrhea. During this process, bacteria in the large intestine decompose the FODMAPs. Since there are actually hardly any bacteria in the small intestine, people with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth syndrome in particular suffer from these symptoms. It is therefore not uncommon to find a SIBO syndrome in patients with irritable bowel syndrome. But why are FODMAPs so poorly absorbed and digested? There are many reasons, however, the most important are channels and transporters in the intestine to absorb the sugars are overround. For example, in fructose intolerance, or there are no suitable transporters for a particular sugar at all. Sugar alcohols are too large to pass through the intestinal wall. Enzymes for the cleavage of certain sugars are missing in the intestinal wall or are overtaxed. This is quite often the case with lactose, which is broken down by the enzyme lactase. Although FODMAPs are poorly digested by all people, they are not bad in and of themselves. However, sufferers of intestinal disorders such as IBS react particularly strongly to FODMAP-rich foods for several reasons. These include so-called visceral hypersensitivity. This means that if you suffer from IBS, your intestines have a hypersensitivity to certain stimuli. There is also a change in the composition of the bacteria in the gut, the microbiome, and an altered motility of the gut. Studies have been able to show that a low FODMAP diet has a positive effect on about 60-70% to of IBS patients. So you should definitely try it if you suffer from bowel problems. It represents one of the best ways to finally achieve lasting improvement in your symptoms. What's the best way to get started? A low FODMAP diet is composed of two phases. At the beginning there is the restriction phase, also called elimination phase, in which FODMAPs are avoided as much as possible. It is best to do this for a period of 6 to 8 weeks. You will notice a dramatic improvement in symptoms here. The second phase is a gradual re-exposure, slowly adding various FODMAP containing foods back into the diet. Which foods do contain FODMAP? Here I recommend you look on the internet, because there are wonderful tabular overviews of which foods are rich in FODMAP and which are not. There are also good cell phone apps where you have all the information at your fingertips. In general, some of the most FODMAP rich foods can be said to be the following. Vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, fennel, onions, garlic, leeks and mushrooms. Legumes such as chickpeas, lentils and kidney beans. Fruits such as apples, pears, apricots, mango and cherries. Milk and dairy products such as yogurt and cottage cheese. And products with sugar substitutes, for example sorbitol or xylitol. Can anyone try the low FODMAP diet? Or to put it in another way, is the FODMAP diet safe? The FODMAP serves as food for the bacteria in the intestines. Thus, a low FODMAP diet deprives the bacteria of their nutritional basis. 
Therefore, especially people with a healthy intestinal flora and without intestinal problems should think carefully about whether they want to change the composition of the bacteria through the low FODMAP diet, because also healthy bacteria feed on FODMAP. However, there is the possibility of explicitly adding well-tolerated dietary fibers in small amounts that serve as food for the good bacteria. These are for example beta-glucanes from oats or fibers from the acacia tree. If you suffer from intestinal problems, be sure to try this diet. It is one of the most effective diets that significantly relieves symptoms in the long run. We wish you success in trying it out and good health. See you in the next video.